times JLo's suspicious involvement. Was she involved? Sean Diddy Combs is currently sitting behind bars no, as good, the federal government continues. Sean okay. Diddy Combs is currently sitting behind bars as the federal government continues to collect evidence related to his decades of reprehensible crimes. Racketeering, human trafficking, violent assault, bribery, Bro, which is a few of the countless offenses Diddy is being investigated for. However, crimes at this scale are typically not a one-man operation. So the feds start to question who could have been involved in, assisting with, or covering up done. his crimes. Jennifer Lopez has been a point of interest as she was in a relationship with the disgraced music mogul from 1999 to 2001, during which she was involved in a nightclub shooting that led to a victim being shot in the face and one man being imprisoned. The details of this case are very messy, and there are multiple strong sources that suggest Diddy was actually the one who fired the gun at the victim's face. But as always, he got away without even a slap on the wrist. Today we are going to deep dive into JLo's suspicious involvement with Diddy and unveil all of the details about that fateful night she does bro i wonder yeah no i wonder how much does she know dude she has to know some of it she has to know some of it like there's no way she had zero involvement how long were they in a relationship together Oh, this is important information. Three years? Yo, in, in three years? Yeah. Three years is crazy. You have to know something. Not want you to know. JLo made it very clear that the first time she met Diddy, she did not like him. He was larger than life. But at first, I, I didn't like him at all. You know, I didn't. I thought he was like, you know... Ick. Now it's normal for first ick? impressions to be a little off, but I find it interesting that she used the word ick to describe how she felt meeting him. That implies that she was disgusted or grossed out by him right. for some reason. However, she goes on to say that it's just because they had different views. Sean and I were very different that way. You know, I was very like family oriented and a, kind of a, you know, the married type. You know, I was actually, when we first worked together on the video, I was married, even though I was going through problems, nobody knew that, you know what I mean? And I, you know, I wanted my family, and even the though ick. my family was not going well, you know what I mean? That was who I was, that's how I was raised. Despite Jennifer feeling like her and Puffy had different relationship values, two years later, they would surprisingly end up as a couple. Over the years, JLo has been accused of getting in relationships or even marrying men to advance her career. And, and she just had to choose Diddy, huh? The diddler himself. Bro, I wonder I wonder if Diddy is just like a like a smooth uh, s like snake tongue man. You know what I mean? Like a smooth talker. Silver tongue, not snake, sorry. But I wonder if he's just a smooth talker, dude. Uh, and based on circumstance, that allegation holds a little bit of weight when it comes to Diddy. Firstly, when they got together, JLo was gearing up for the release of her debut uh -huh. album, On The Six, in 1999. But she needed a ton of help. You see, JLo was now 30 years old and was trying to prove herself as a musician. She had already proven herself Which is in the rough. industry as a dancer. She danced alongside MC Hammer in an episode of Yo! MTV Raps, and then earned a job as a backup dancer for New Kids on the Block's performance at the 19. American Music Awards. But her big break happened when she got a spot as a member of the Fly Girls, which was a dance group on the widely popular sketch comedy show In Living Color. But just being a dancer was far from the yeah. illustrious career she saw herself having. From there, she, had she bigger hired ambitions. producer Eric Gold as her manager, where she was able to break into acting in Hollywood productions. Her first acting role was on the television show South Central, which was a comedy drama sitcom that aired on Fox in 1994. From there, okay. she got more TV roles in Second 
in Chances and Hotel Malibu, which transitioned to movie roles in Mi Familia, Money Train, and Jack Probably. alongside the legendary comedian Robin Williams. However, her breakout film was Selena, a biopic about Selena Quintanilla Perez, the queen of Tejano music, which is a genre blending Mexican music with elements of American country and jazz. Lopez made headlines as the first Latina actress to earn $1 million for a film. Not only did this cement her place in Hollywood, but it also earned her a Golden Globe nomination, making her a draw for future work. And despite her acting career about to take off like a rocket ship, she didn't want to be an actress. She wanted to be a musician. Embracing her Latin roots, Lopez recorded a music demo in Spanish, which sparked a bidding war among record labels. And ultimately, she signed with Sony Music Group. The deal with Sony was described as lucrative, as they outbid major labels like Capitol Records and EMI Latin. As Lo Bro, it's always the Spanish records that have like the hardest beats. Like, I don't know what it is, man. I don't know what it is, but the way they do their beats, it just, it sounds so good. Even though I can't understand what they're saying, yeah, you just, you know, you really understand what they were trying to get at. Lopez worked on her debut album, Sony yeah. launched a major <laughs> campaign to promote her, leading to her appearance in Diddy's music video for Been Around the World in 1997. At that time, Diddy was an extremely I don't powerful know, maybe. and popular music industry executive. He single-handedly developed and marketed the notorious B.I.G. to hip-hop yeah, superstardom. Yeah. His label, Bad Boy Entertainment, was an absolute powerhouse, signing some of the most successful artists of the late 90s. He his, uh, his whole, like, label name did not age well it did not age well dude he had personally won two Grammy Awards in 1998, Look at this, and man. he was known to throw some of the most lavish parties where countless powerful figures in the entertainment industry would attend. Being Freak Diddy's offs. girlfriend was quite literally a golden ticket to superstardom, especially in the music industry. It's also convenient that Diddy's label was owned by Epic Records, which was also owned by Sony, the same label that signed Jennifer Lopez. Plus, yeah. Diddy was known to introduce and mentor new artists in the industry, such I'm as sure he was. Lush, Usher, and Justin Bieber. And yeah. when J-Lo talks about her relationship with Diddy in retrospect, it sounds like she's talking about an old manager rather than an old lover. He was great. During, it was almost like we I was meant to meet him while I was making my first album um, because he helped me a lot. He was kind of like a mentor in a way. Um, not a mentor, but like guided me. He had also, a way isn't J-Lo kind of like a joke now? Because of that, like, interview she did? What what interview was that? She kept talking about, like, the streets of Brooklyn? I, I can't remember. She, like, said her favorite sandwich was, like, a ham sandwich and, and the orange drink. Like, we all know she's talking about, like, a Fanta. Come on. Come on. Uh, like, a joke. Was Diddy's music even good? I think he had some good songs, no? Wait. Wait. Yeah, he had some good ones, right? Oh, God. I don't remember any of them. Oh, God. Uh, not a good look. You're communicating that would it make very plainly like that sucks. Don't do that. Or you need to do this or you need to do that. Don't forget. Like, and I was smart enough to sponge up the things that were useful. So when you factor in J-Lo getting the ick when she first met Diddy to then essentially signing to the same label she's a while scammer. she's trying to prove herself in the music industry, it makes it seem like this was not love, this was business. It was a business and I got relationship. Some business with you because today's video is oh. sponsored by Aura and it's a very important time to be talking about My video about is not that. sponsored by Aura. This seen a number of high profile data breaches raising serious concerns about personal information security. Dell, 49 million customers Dell. exposed. AT&T, 11 and a half million customers impacted over two separate breaches. Ticketmaster, over 560 million customer records compromised. But most alarming of all, just a few months ago, National 
National Public Data announced that they had suffered a major breach potentially impacting every American. The incident compromised no, over 2.9 billion security. records used for background checks, including critical personal information such as full names, addresses, dates of birth, phone numbers, and most importantly, social security numbers. And it's it got nothing. confirmed that members of the hacker group have released this sensitive information online for free. If you haven't been taking free. your personal information online seriously, now's the time to change that. You're more vulnerable than ever in today's digital landscape. Thankfully, I feel secure because I use Aura. Aura monitors your personal data, including your social security number, across billions of data points like the dark web and public court records to alert you about potential identity theft. Plus, Aura offers okay, a variety okay. of other features to keep you safe online. I'm not leaving myself and my family vulnerable to data breaches. And if you don't want to either, you can go to aura.com slash patrickcc to try two weeks for free. Diddy, who at the time went by Puff Daddy or Puffy, was at the peak of his career, and he had just recently got away with multiple fatal encounters that he was involved in. He somehow was not indicted, arrested, or even a suspect in the murders of Tupac and Biggie. This is surprising because, as we broke down in great detail in my Diddy Files video, all roads as to why the two rappers died seem to lead to him. Also- Like, why- I still don't understand. Like, I, I think I watched a documentary on Netflix about it. Um... Like, the whole, like, Tupac and Biggie deal. And, dude, it had to be Diddy. Why was he not chosen as a suspect? Like, there's no way he just pays them off and they're okay with it, right? It's been a cold case for literally ever. There's just no way that it stays a cool case when when they had it like i'm pretty sure they had decent evidence no or was the evidence like tampered with and that's what it was so in 1998 remember. he finally settled a case that he had been battling for seven years in 1991 he organized a celebrity charity basketball game where a stampede occurred that took the lives of nine people eight families of the deceased settled wrongful death lawsuits against mr combs in early 1998 mr combs ended up paying around six hundred thousand dollars of a total of three million dollars or so when you combine these major legal wins with him having more success than ever and Dating yeah. a buzzing superstar, he was probably feeling untouchable, which meant that anyone who came at him the wrong way would pay the price. He and touched and diddled. Would pay the price would be Steve Stout, a longtime executive with Interscope Records and manager of the rapper Nas. Nas had recently released a single featuring Puffy called Hate Me Now, and when the music video aired on MTV, Puffy was outraged. The video features the crucifixion of Christ with Nazir himself playing the role of Jesus. Diddy was also cast as one of the criminals on a cross beside Nas. Puffy, who is a devout Catholic, had requested his image on the cross be removed from the cut of the video that was to air nationally. Whether it was an honest mistake or done intentionally is unknown, but the fact of the matter is the request was ignored and the full video was broadcast across the country. From there, Diddy How? went to Steve Stout's office with several bodyguards and allegedly attacked Stout by smashing a bottle of champagne over his head. When Puffy was asked about the situation, this was his response. Hey, Puffy, there's a bad rumor going around that either you or your people nah. are involved. Dude, this guy looks insane, man. This guy looks insane. He he did it. He did it. Regardless of what he says, he did it. People were involved with beating up a record executive. Well, yeah. what, what's your side of the story on that? Um, I heard that rumor too. I don't even really know where it came from. One month later, in May of 99, Steve Stout reported the assault to the press. I'm scared of him. Everybody is afraid of him. He has a dark history. Stout goes on to explain the attack. He punched me in the face, and then he grabbed the phone and bashed me in the head with it. One minute I'm in the middle of a meeting, and the next minute I'm down on the floor, and Puffy and his guys are kicking and pounding me. One of them picks up Bro, a chair what? and throws it at me. Then Puffy throws my desk over, and they just walk out like nothing happened. Sean Combs oh, is he the mob? Then bailed out, but the case never went to trial and was settled out of court. Because there was no lawsuit? No. There was, you know, there was just, a, like you said, a payoff. Do you know how much, uh, how much Steve got paid off? He got paid off well. Millions? He's a... Yeah, you could say that. Okay. Puffy seemingly. Uh, I don't. I don't believe anyone that says garbage like that, dude. Without proof, you, they're obviously just allegations, and like this guy's smirking at it, bro. You know he's lying. He's a. 
Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Puffy seemingly felt he could do whatever he wanted because ultimately he had the money, the power, Conspiracies. the connections to make any problem go away. And that's exactly what many people think happened in the infamous 1999 club shooting. The one where Jennifer Lopez saw the entire thing go down. Wait, what? On December 27th, 1999, Diddy and Jennifer Lopez arrived at Manhattan's famous Club New York in a limousine. Club New York, two days after Christmas, 45th Street, Manhattan, Times Square. Everybody's outside. Fur coats, Benzes, baddest bitches, richest niggas, ball players, gangsters, rappers, all in one spot. Diddy and JLo arrived with a small crew, including his chauffeur, Wardell Fenderson, his bodyguard, Anthony Wolf Jones, and his newest bad boy signee, upcoming rapper, Shine. I get inside the club. Pat, I see J Lo with a security guard walking to the bathroom. I'm like, oh, this shit lit. J Lo in the club, this shit lit. I see Puffy and them niggas over there. Him and Shot, them niggas just standing on the, on the couches, my wet bottles, doing it. As Puffy and his crew attempted to leave, they navigated uh -huh. through the crowded club. As they walked past the bar, they bumped into another crew, led by a man named Matthew Allen, who goes by the street name Scar. Whoever bumped into Scar caused him to spill his drink on his clothes, to oh, which his friend bro. named Marcus turned around in a fit of rage and pushed the first person he saw, which happened to be Diddy. Puffy says, you know, do you know who I am? And, yeah. and uh, this guy Marcus says, yeah, mother we got money too. And he takes a wad of cash and he throws it right at his face. Right. And it's 50s and 100s, and it's just raining 50s and 100s, which of course the whole right. bar, you know, it's goes crazy. Yeah, yeah they start yeah. diving on the you know, oh, Of course. But all I know is he, I saw when he swung and slapped and money was raining through the sky and falling to the floor. Everybody started trying to run and pick up money, and it was just craziness. Oh, Did he? he Next thing I know, me and this nigga on the floor looking at each other. We like, oh sh we, we like, yo. Cause you know, after one shot, you like this, but then you hear more shot, that's when you fall. Now there are conflicting reports as to exactly what happened next, but we do know that several shots were fired from a gun yeah. into the club. One of the victims named Natanya Rubin recalls being shot. Like literally walking backwards towards the door. Drawing Diddy's victim cry? Recounting the day Diddy shot her in the face? What? From their hip. I told my friend, I said, oh my God, watch out. As I turned back to look at them, I watched them bow, bow. Both of them fired and the muzzle flash was like, pew, pew. I watched them both fire their guns. I watched them. I got hit right here in my nose, in between my eyes, which means I'm facing directly at you. Just like I'm looking at you, that's exactly how I was looking at him. And I watched him shoot me. Today, Natanya speaks what? about the situation very calmly. But back when it first happened, she was extremely distraught, seeking justice. I'm not famous. I don't have a publicity machine. I don't Bro, how do you survive getting shot in the, like, right here? What stops the bullets? Was it, dude, what, what, it, what stops the bullet here? Bone? No. I don't have a billion dollars of insurance on my body, or any part of my body for that matter. Hey, it wasn't, it didn't look like it's up here. It looks like it's like on the ridge of the nose. Who shot in the face, who still has bullet fragments, bullet fragments two inches from her spine. She has two children. Wait, she has a from from her spine. I'm confused. Wait, what? Wait, was she on the ground when they shot her in the face? Like at an at a terrible angle, right? Like the bullet like goes in like at an angle like this and goes down, like. Damn. 
Oh God. Old business. What is she to do now? There's an issue of health coverage. I mean, what do you tell two children, ten and seven? Um, mommy got shot in the face. Another victim, twenty-seven-year-old uh, Julia. Sounds Jones, like a terrible lawyer. Also recalls being shot. I ain't had no time to duck. It just hit me. Felt, you know, the burn sensation on my shoulder. I just dropped instantly to the floor. The next thing he remembers after the bullet pierced his shoulder. People screaming, running, running from for the door to the exit, trying to, you know, get out the way. After the gunfire stopped, Puppy and J Lo rushed out of the club and were whisked into a vehicle driven by his chauffeur, Wardell Fenderson. The group fled the chaos in a Lincoln Navigator SUV registered to Puffy's Bad Boy Record Company, right. speeding through 11 red lights while the cops pursued them. As the car was speeding away from the police, a bystander witnessed somebody throw a gun outside of the passenger side of Bro, the car. Bro, all the this witness evidence. Told investigators that he saw a woman's hand fling a gun from the chauffeur-driven Lincoln Navigator. J-Lo. He says uh, the Lincoln Navigator is driving by. He, According to him, he sees a light-skinned, slender arm throw this loaded weapon out the window. Okay. And that, that lands on his car. If this was true, it implicates Jennifer Lopez as yeah. that's likely the person they are describing for discarding a piece of evidence. The Navigator was eventually pulled over by police and authorities found another firearm with three spent cases in the front seat. Nobody took credit for the gun. Therefore, all four of them, J-Lo, Diddy, the driver, and the bodyguard, were arrested and taken to the Midtown right. Precinct for questioning. We would later- Can they not- Get fingerprints? Later find out that the weapon had been reported stolen in Georgia. None of the four occupants of the car had a license for the gun. Back at the nightclub, Shine was taken away in handcuffs because he also was in possession of a firearm with three spent cases. Scar and his crew were not arrested because they fled the scene. While Diddy and his crew were in the holding cell, allegedly he attempted to bribe his driver, Wardell Fenderson. I'm Puff Daddy, you know? Fenderson quoted Combs as saying in hushed tones, I can't take this gun rap. I'll give you $50,000. According to Fenderson, Shine chimed in. Listen, dog, you don't have a record. You'll get probation. We can't let P take the gun. You'll be a part of the family. Combs then offered him a diamond pinky ring, a gift from J-Lo, as collateral for the promised $50,000. The driver initially did tell police that the gun was no his, way, but he later bro. recanted that statement. There was also a tapped phone call where they suspect Puff had been trying to bribe the driver once again. And I just want to make you feel like comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Make your family feel comfortable. Everyone involved in the situation bailed out of jail, and as you can imagine, the media was in a frenzy. Puffy quickly lawyered up, hiring a dream team of two top defense yeah. attorneys, Johnny Cochran and Benjamin Braffman. They held a- Yeah, he should have been cooked for a long time, bro. Like, dude, there's so much evidence that is just like stacked against him and he dude is a snake man he is a snake he is literally slipping out of everything it's crazy bro are the nypd just that garbage are they just that bad at their job yeah, but, like, who cares about the money? If you're doing it, if you're a police officer, you should be doing it because you love the job, right? Not because you're just forced into your 9 to 5, like, office job. You should be doing it for the love of, like, generating justice. L cops, dude. The press conference, which was basically just an official way for Puffy to put out an official statement to proclaim his innocence. I know. On Sunday evening, I went to Club New York, and under no circumstances whatsoever did I have anything to do with a shooting. From there, his lawyer proceeded to take questions and attempt to clarify what had happened that night. Whatever happened at the club had nothing to do with him, and when he went outside, and he was whisked into a car in the back of the car with Miss Lopez. The gun was found in the front where two other people were, were, were. If you or I went into a car and sat in the back seat and a gun was found in the front, all cases would be dismissed. Listen, listen, you can't hate the lawyer, okay? The lawyer is doing his job. And, and the fact that, like, this is probably a very, very top, like, qualified lawyer, right? So... As long as he does he does his job correctly, if the killer gets away, you know it, it, it sucks that we have a system like that. But I mean, hey, all I can say is 
it ain't looking good for YNW Melly. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Next September. <laughs> the reason Mr. Combs' case was not dismissed is a simple one. Because every time someone lies, you all take it as true. His lawyer is trying to convince the press that yeah. the gun being in the front seat is this obvious matter of fact that proves Diddy's innocence. When in reality, Diddy's company owned the car and they drove for 11 New York City blocks speeding away from the cops, which is more than enough time for somebody to take the gun from the back seat and move it to the front seat. Yeah, but we're going to deep dive into so all the stupid. details of the case in a minute. Right before the trial, the media was more focused on Jennifer Lopez since Diddy being involved in a shooting wasn't really all that surprising. Headlines emerged such as her high-risk romance and her night in hell. Whether whether or not she had been involved in or knew exactly what happened was a juicy story and everyone wanted answers. Yeah. Which is why many people believe that she wore a specifically revealing dress at the 2000s Grammy Awards to take attention off the incident. This award show was less than two months after the shooting and headlines switched from talking about that to talking about this skimpy garment. In fact, her Grammy yeah. dress is the reason oh. why Google Images exist. Holy! Did that pick up on the mic? A giant, giant bolt of lightning, bruh. Or... Bro, it's pouring! Thunder, not, not lightning. Can't see it with my windows closed, you know? My blinds down. This today. Google's executive oh. chairman. Oops. Forgot to discuss that. Uh, it's crazy how, like, people do all this controversial stuff to just paint the picture of them in a different light than, than accusations are, like, t uh, the accusations are telling us. Like, the fact that she she's probably the one that threw the gun out the window, and then she wears this revealing clothing to just take uh, take all the attention away from the, the Diddy trial and put it on her creating controversy i think that's so stupid like how the news treats these these v criminal acts it is a joke the news is a joke bro that's what i'm getting at in a shortened way of saying it uh, my brain's not working today. Her Grammy's dress is the reason why Google Images exist today. Google's executive chairman, Eric Schmidt, said Google users wanted more than just text. This first became apparent after the 2000s Grammy Awards, where Jennifer Lopez wore a green dress that, well, caught the world's attention. At the time, it was the most popular search query we had ever seen, but we had no surefire way of getting users exactly what they wanted. JLo wearing that dress. Google Image Search was born. As we got closer to the trial, David David Letterman interviewed Jennifer Lopez on Late Night and asked her about the recent trouble she had got in with Diddy. He was referring to the nightclub shooting yes. and JLo made it very clear that she did not want to talk. Trouble now. There's some trouble now. I, I don't think I need to tell people, but there, there's trouble now. We, and we don't need to go into it, do we? No. And, and you, you can't really say anything about it, can you? No. So there's, I really shouldn't have even brought it up. I don't know why I brought it up. But there is some trouble now. Now, oh my god the discomfort you can see just plain as day on her face is crazy crazy telling bro how do they get away with it how do they get away with it man has 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 the trouble uh affected the uh, relationship no the trial for the nightclub shooting case began with jury selection. He's talking he's talking about her throwing the gun out the window. No. He's talking about her throwing the gun out the window. When someone witnessed it happening. January 17th, 2001, followed by opening arguments on January 29th, 2001. Interestingly enough, we found this New York Post article that claims that JLo testified in front of 23 grand jurors in Manhattan Supreme Court, saying, look, I danced with him. I had my arms around him. No gun. But I found countless Lying other sources in court. that report that she never testified, 
but she would be willing to if she had to. I have told Sean that if he and his lawyers change their minds and require me to testify, I will be there immediately to tell the truth. Another interesting point in this case is that Shine got separate attorneys than Puffy. Puff had his superstar legal team, but Shine, who was just 20 years old with no substantial money, was actually- Listen, listen, dude. You can't take the hit for someone else because they're not willing to do that for you, bro. They are never willing to do it for you, so why should you do it for them? Shine should have never taken the cop out. Should have never. Because Diddy would never do that for him. Oh, his family will be living comfortably. Oh, yeah, for how long? For how long until he's just, he's like, oh, he's already taken the hit? I don't gotta do nothing. I don't gotta do jack shit. Yeah, whatever, bro. Never do that for someone you know wouldn't do it for you. Actually appointed different lawyers, and those two lawyers had previously worked for Diddy. And this is weird because Puff and Shine are essentially defending themselves for the exact same crime, and Shine is signed to Diddy's label, so why would they have separate legal teams? Diddy's defense was simple. He denied everything. He didn't have a gun, he didn't get into an altercation, he didn't get slapped with a stack of money, he didn't shoot a gun, and he did not try to hide a gun after yeah. the fact. Detectives who interviewed Typical. 350 people that witnessed the events in the nightclub almost unanimously agree that Diddy and Shine did fire a weapon. The other witnesses that were that did describe what happened, you know, say that Sean was Sean Combs was the one who who uh, who fired you know, in, and shot these people along with- Bro, I'm telling you. Additionally, there were metal detectors that everyone in the club were required to go through, which would mean that the intended targets of the bullets, Scar and his crew, would not have had guns on them. The only people who didn't go through the metal detectors is, is Puffy and J-Lo. Right. And uh, I think everyone else went through. Okay. They were the only ones Bro. who had guns. Also, if you think about it, if Scar and his crew had guns on them, this situation would have probably been a lot worse because they likely a lot would different. have started shooting back. Yeah. But instead, they fled the scene. And speaking of- Bro, that's what I'm saying. Bro, dude, uh, it, was the NYPD just that garbage? 300 plus people all witnessed the same thing. And he's still not locked up? He still didn't get locked up? ...of Scar. Conveniently, he was nowhere to be found in the trial, and that's because he was allegedly threatened to disappear. And he, and he said, he goes, look, you know, they were after me, they, they were trying to, you know, get me to disappear anyway, and they were going to pay me. At one point, he was offered $100,000 to just disappear. This is according to him. They had a meeting set to go get this money. He was going to bring some people with him for his safety you know and, right. and uh so he felt fairly comfortable but he got a call from someone in puffy's inner circle who he knew from his neighborhood wherever he knew him i yeah. forget exactly but who told him uh don't go to pick up that money you will you will never see it and that and that'll be it for you they, mm -hmm. they're gonna kill you Despite all of the evidence that seemingly was stacked up against Puffy, yeah, here we go, one here we go. witness was somehow able to ex They weren't in court. They were not in court, just in uh, the, the account of 300 and what, 53 is what they said? Witnesses that were there on the site seeing exactly what happened. I mean, a lady got shot in the face right here and can recall exactly what she saw and who shot her. And they don't do anything about that. That That's literally on the police that were at the scene. That's that's their fault that nothing happened. That's not that's not the court. That's not the court. That is the NYPD failing to do their job. Like that's that's blows my mind. And that's not a thing. That's not money, bro. That that can't be money. exonerate him entirely. The witness, Sharice Myers, was a bouncer at the club. She claimed that when shots rang out, she fell on top of Puffy during the shooting and that she did not feel a gun on him. This single testimony somehow negated all of the witnesses, all of the t See? That's not money. That's not money. This, this circumstance 
is a jury, bro. This is a an, an un, supposed to be an unbiased jury who takes the account of one person compared to the 353 353 witnesses. I'm just as lost as you are, honestly. Like like what is happening? How is he evading all of these witnesses? Who who is suing him? Who is suing him? The state? Because if the state is suing him, they need to find better prosecutors and, and a better defense or lawyer. Like, what? Oh, my God. It, it's like... A, did he did he pay the lawyer behind the scenes being like, hey, you're defending the state? Hey, take this hundred grand and fail the entire the entire like case. Mess it up, man. Testimonies and detective reports and the metal detectors and everything that made Puffy look guilty. How? We don't know. Additionally, Sharice <laughs> testified that Shine was the one who shot the gun. And for some reason, Shine's lawyers Bro. admitted that he shot- He's the only one that could have done it. He's the only person that didn't go through the metal detectors. He is the only one that could have done it. Everyone there, everyone there said he did it. One, one person said he didn't. They have to be the ones telling the truth. Oh my god. It, it, it's blowing, it, it's messing with my mind. My brain is shutting off. Got the gun, but in self-defense. So Puffy's defense strategy was deny everything, and Shine's defense strategy was, oh yeah, I did shoot the gun, but I was defending myself. It was at this point that Shine realized his attorneys, which were appointed to him by Puffy, were not acting in his best interest. But at the point where, you know, he calling the witnesses, you know, to do me dirty, then you understand that, you know, well, man, if these guys is working for him, oh, because I went to the judge like three times complaining about inefficiency with my lawyers because they was just dumbing out. Like right. when this be on the stand, they would ask them two questions that didn't make sense and then sit down. It's obvious that they were selling me, you understand, in order to appease him. You know, there was a dual yeah. loyalty there. All fingers were pointed at Puff. But see, the thing is, is why go through and, and, and get the attorneys that are recommended to you by Diddy? Like, you're already saying that you don't want to take the fall for him. Why not just find your own lawyers? Why not just find your own lawyers, though? Or, like, fire them and then, and then get new lawyers. Yeah, I know it said that. What, 50 do? Uh, that's a different story. But because of Sharice Meyer's testimony and Shine's lawyers essentially backing up her I'm pretty story, sure the jury... Pretty sure that was around the time that 50 got shots. I know that's like around the time of Get Rich or Die Trying. Yeah, nine shots, yeah. Jury felt this case was solved, that Shine was guilty and Puffy yeah. was innocent. Sean Combs was acquitted of all charges, and Shine was found guilty oh my of God. five other charges, including assault in the Bro, first it's not degree, real. reckless endangerment, and criminal possession of a weapon. All the evidence was stacked against Diddy, and he makes it out scot-free. Bro, that it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Like, did they not? Did they not like dust the gun for fingerprints or anything like that? Like, what? What is going on? 
Did they not do an investigation? And if they did, they they got the witness accounts of 300 plus people all saying Diddy did it. Ah, uh, pay to win. Uh, on God, on God. Justice Charles Solomon sentenced Barrow to 10 years for first degree assault. Oh I also God. find it interesting that Shine's lawyers, who literally just lost their case and know their client is going to jail, walk up to the press stand smiling, looking like they won. What about Shine? What about Shine? Nah, nah, he's bro. Disappointed. He's of course disappointed with. There's just something odd about how he says, what about Shine, while smiling. It's like, what do you mean, what about Shine? You just lost the case. He's going to jail. Why are you smiling? Bro. And then he looks. And, and who's going to hire this guy? Who's going to hire him after this? Why, why is he smiling about a downfall in his career? Who's hiring this guy knowing that you're going to lose the court case? Saying that he's going to never act in, your, in, in the best interest of his client. Who is hiring him after this? Why are you smiling? Said his partner, and his partner is a lot more serious, and he immediately tucks that smile away and acts very serious. It's no like shit. smiling because the job actually was done the right way. But hey, what do I know? There are theories that Puffy paid the jurors, or maybe he bribed the judge, or he paid Sharice Myers to strengthen his case, but none of them really have much substantial evidence. No, However, it does kind of seem what it that Shine was the fall guy. Shine said that Diddy admitted this many years later. You know, Puff apologized. He did apologize to me for that. You know, oh, bro. Paris, and, you know, he did say, you know, he could have handled it better, but he was on... Mm -hmm. Yo, thanks for the apology and the reason I got locked up in jail for 11 years. Hey, yo, thanks for the apology, man. You know, you really didn't tell me my lawyers were against me the whole time. Yo, thanks for the apology. Under a lot of pressure, you know, from the lawyers, you know, to throw me under the bus. Uh, and, and that's exactly what, you know, Benjamin Brockman. Did he uh, did everyone dirty, bro? Johnny Cochran. And, and the entire uh, dream team, that was their position. Let's be for real. But Diddy has always denied that. I did not force anybody or tell anybody to say anything that 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 would damage or hurt Shine's case. I just wouldn't do that. that. That would not be my intent whatsoever. Now, there is no doubt that Shine did commit a horrible crime. Like, you can't just fire a gun into a club where there's tons of people right. around. But it really seems like he was not the only one who should have been found guilty. And throughout the years, there was only one person who never shared their side of the story. J-Lo. And that was Jennifer Lopez. J-Lo was right there oh the entire God. night. She arrived with Puffy. She was in See, the club with him. That's what I'm saying, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, the investigation, do they not interview J-Lo? Do they not? It's like the NYPD didn't even do their job. They didn't even do their job. She garnered the fame from being at the root of controversy just to wear the dress and boost her fame even more. She, she played her cards 100% correct. She played her cards. Dude. Oh, probably. But again, it's like. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's their fault. I'm saying it's the NYPD's fault because they didn't even interview JLo. The person who was literally there. Like she doesn't testify. Why? Why does she not get put on the stand to testify? She was right there when they had the scuffle. She was in the getaway vehicle where a gun was discarded. And she was even in the holding cell where there was allegedly a bribe that happened. She also continued to date Puffy before and during the trial. If anyone knows exactly how this all went down, 
it's her. But after this trial concluded, their relationship did not last much longer. In an interview she with got what she wanted. Stone, JLo recalls, he said to me many times, I want a divorce. Which keep in mind, they were never married. I'll be away so much or he'll be, he can't get away whatever. But he'll say, so where do I send the papers? Lopez affirms that all is well, but they have no plans to marry. She goes on to detail their vastly different lifestyle preferences. Puff loves to go out, she, she says. She literally said that Puff, that Diddy gave her the ick before they even got together. And she wasn't married with him. How can they get a divorce? He's been a going out to clubs person all his life, doing his thing. I've always been a homebody, so we switch off what we do when we're together. I don't really like to talk about us because I don't feel like it's anybody's business. It's a okay, J -Lo. He's an artist, I'm an artist, we have two separate careers. There are some things you have to keep sacred and private, she says quietly, breaking eye contact as she does whenever Puffy is brought up in a non-professional capacity. That's such an interesting detail, like why did the writer write that specifically? Because uh, because the writer knows that J Lo has a major involvement in all of it, the writer knows. The writer knows, even if it's just speculation, he knows. Eye contact. They knew something. In this business, you're yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. public and open and out there for everybody. There is no privacy. There really isn't. At the end of the day, you really have <laughs> to fight to keep certain things sacred so that they survive. And sometimes they don't. And that's life. But you try. Most people look at JLo's response as completely normal. Even celebrities deserve privacy, and it's not weird to think they don't want to yeah, see every single privacy. detail about their personal lives. However, due to the suspicious acquittal of Diddy in the shooting and the nature of his recent RICO charges, some look at her demand for privacy as a strategic way to separate herself from his sins. Yeah. Was she actually a homebody? I mean, we do have plenty of photos of her at the Diddy parties, especially some where she Hey. Hey. I mean, she looks like she's having fun. She looks like she's having fun at that freak off. I don't know. She appears to be cozied up in the bed with other stars, perhaps a prelude to the freak offs. That hey. I, at that time, was uh, cared very deeply. Uh, for for Sean and um, look, she's not making eye contact. Hey, you know, we just we just didn't have the same kind of ideals about life. Dude, you saw that? Too. Nah, 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 nah. She knows something. Same kind of ideals about life and family and stuff like that, and just wasn't a good relationship for me. It didn't have so much to do with him as it had to do with me at the time. I had to learn. Um, to care about myself a little bit more and put up certain boundaries of what I would accept and wouldn't accept because um, really he was just being himself. He wasn't doing anything wrong and he felt like he loved me very much and I know he did and I, I felt like the same way. So if I was unhappy in some way, then I was the one who had to do something. Not him, he was doing everything he wanted to do. Just a few months after the trial, the couple quietly went their separate ways. The relationship only lasted 18 months. But Diddy says almost nothing but positive things about Jennifer. I'm in sure. In one interview, he said that he was still in love with his ex, Kim Porter. I got caught up in the hype a little bit. You know, Jennifer, she definitely a bad chick, but I was still in love with Kim, you know what I'm saying? So I couldn't marry Jennifer if I was still in love with Kim. A couple years later, JLo revealed that their breakup was actually because Puffy had cheated on her. It was the first time I was with someone who wasn't faithful, JLo tells Vibe magazine. I was in this relationship with Puff where I was totally crying, crazy, and going nuts. It really took my whole life in a tailspin. I never caught him, but I just knew. He'd say he was going to a club for a couple of hours and then never come back that night. Puffy's longtime bodyguard, Gene Deal, uh -huh. also recalls a time where he cheated on JLo immediately after she threw him a massive party for his birthday. And then we came back. Oh, did he? Slam. Has set it up because Jennifer went upstairs. And Puff said, Yo, Gene, watch the door. Don't let nobody come through the door. And I wanted to say it was Ugh. Korean, but I'm not sure it was her. And while Jennifer was upstairs, he was down there getting a fellatio from her. Did she ever find out? 
She know now. Now this is not as popular of a theory oh because my it's not God. that sexy, but there is a chance that Diddy was an entirely different person towards JLo. If you watch my Diddy Files video, then you know that when it comes to his personal relationships, he's quite literally a monster. I mean, there's video of him beating his girl. Yeah. But if we speculate- Bro, we, we all saw that. We all saw the video. Disgusting, man. Disgusting behavior. Gross, man. Bruh, like imagine imagine putting up with that for so long in your life you haven't seen that video bro like obviously i can't show it on stream because it's that heinous that his relationship with j-lo was just a business transaction then Maybe he treated her better than his other partners. When you nah, was around, did he, just did search you it. see him put his hands on Jennifer Lopez? Well, he didn't do any violence to Mrs. Halo. That's why I didn't see any violence. That's surprising. It's a different breed, bro. He wasn't going to risk himself like that. And plus, a lot of people didn't like him. J-Lo mother didn't like him. Benny Medina didn't like him. He, if he would have ever touched Miss Lopez in any kind of aggressive way, she would have said something. Man, listen to me. The whole Bronx would have been on puff. It's a yeah, yeah. I guess he, I guess he picks and choose who he wants to beat and who he doesn't. Ones that he knows that he can like get in the minds of and manipulate. And then there's J Lo, who uh, now knows his secret, but he probably has some dirt on her too. A different. He has to. It, you know he. Knew that she There's was no an way. Actress, she was a singer. He did put her on a pedestal, but he still was seeing Kim. So I don't, I don't think that she had those experiences. People only do what you let them do. If he would have did that to her, he would only had one time. You see, when he ran out the club and left her after that shooting at Shine, <laughs> she didn't want to be with him no more. <laughs> It seems like J-Lo has a great deal of deniability as far as her involvement and or knowledge of Diddy's crimes. He could have been a totally different person towards her, yeah. or he was cheating on her, which we can assume would mean that he was constantly lying to her. Or maybe the relationship was strictly business and it was all fake, so they didnn't even know yeah, each other for, that well. for PR. or all of the above. Those who still look at J-Lo suspiciously believe that she knew about his sins and purposely turned a blind eye since he was helping her music career immensely or that she was actually Dude. involved in the cover-up of the nightclub shooting or at the very that would be so disgusting of j-lo that well or all of the above those who still look at j-lo suspiciously believe that she knew about his sins and purposely turned a blind eye since he was helping her music career immensely or well, that she was actually involved in the cover-up of the nightclub shooting or at the very least she knows the real story and the reason she is not speaking out against him today is because she is also guilty i mean this clip yeah, of her something she has to death be on diddy is very telling you look in the ocean you mm -hmm. see two people floating oh shit. You can only pull up one because that's how much room you have on your raft. You look in the ocean, you see Ben Affleck, <laughs> and you see Diddy. <laughs> I also find this clip of JLo's mom in 2015 very interesting. I was telling you that I could always see you getting back with Puffy in a little way. <laughs> Yes. yes. Or in my mind. Look at him. Look at him. Or in my mind. I don't think I've ever seen a more seriously concerned face. Her mom is not playing around. She demanded that JLo stop talking. The reason why yeah, all that's this matters crazy. is because it's very possible that today JLo is in contact with federal investigators about the 1999 club shooting. She could plead the fifth, she could say that she doesn't remember, or she could testify against him and actually help put him in jail. And since Diddy Which is currently- she should be doing her due diligence, man. As a civilian, she should be doing and correcting justice. She should, but she's not gonna. Being charged with Rico, the nightclub shooting can still be added to his charges as long as they can prove that this incident is a part of a pattern of repetitive criminal behavior. Yeah, she won't. She won't. Imagine, imagine the backlash 
that she would get after holding that secret in for for like 25 years dude imagine the backlash oh my god here in the aftermath of that they have witnesses that say he bragged about um intimidating witnesses uh, uh, paying off jurors certainly when you have that kind of stuff if you go back and you find that juror that was paid off or jurors multiple yeah that may have been paid off um certainly that gives you the impetus to kind of come forward and refresh those charges on a federal case so now it's jlo's move is she going to hey, stay she's silent, not going to yeah. fifth and pretend like she doesn't remember anything or will she be a part of the inevitable takedown and imprisonment of sean diddy combs I no she would never she would never come out and say anything about uh, uh, about diddy nah there's no way she does that nah uh, the backlash would be insane but but i don't think she's too scared now if she was about to release an album i could see it i could see it new j-lo album 2025 she needs that uh, she needs the eyes she needs the eyes on it so she comes out and testifies prediction prediction